This episode focuses on process principle of binder jetting. In the next few videos, I'm going to talk about binder jetting. And you see, I have the, some of the more colorful uh, examples in front of me that are typical for binder jetting. So binder jetting is uh, defined as a process in which a liquid bonding agent is selectively deposited to join powder particles. So a selective joining of powder particles, um, that's already a little bit similar to powder bed fusion, but instead of a heat source, we're using an adhesive to bond the particles together. Gives you already an idea what the similarities are and what um, property differences we might be able to expect. So here's a schematic of the process. Again, it probably reminds you of powder bed fusion because we have a build platform that goes down as we need to deposit new uh, material from the powder supply. So as we are done with one layer, the build platform moves down. We make room for another layer of powder being deposited. At the same time, the powder supply moves up and provides excess material. A leveling roller comes by, takes that excess material and deposits that powder on the, on the surface of the powder bed. And now we have the inkjet printhead with a liquid adhesive supply that deposits droplet of that adhesive to trace the outline and then the whole area uh, of the layer that we want to bond together. Once the adhesive is deposited for the whole layer, the build platform moves down, the powder supply moves up, the excess of powder that's provided by that movement is taken up by the leveling roller and deposited on the, on the powder bed and the inkjet printhead deposits the adhesive again. This is repeated as often as needed to form the parts. What you see, because it's a powder-based process, is that we need no support structures and parts can be stacked on top of each other, similar to what we've seen with polymer powder bed fusion. This is how the process looks from printing all the way to the final, final product for a metal binder jetting uh, process. We start with the printing. You see here that's the uh, print head that uh, applies the adhesive and because of the different color of the wet um, uh, metal powder, we can see the, um, the layer that is being printed right now. Once that's completely done, we depowder the part. So we, we use a vacuum to take all the un, unglued um, particles away and then it's put into an autoclave kind of system for the infiltration um, process. And then we have the final metal product, um, a bracket in this case. Let's look at a video from X1. X1 is one of the big manufacturers of these um, powder uh, binder jetting uh, printers. It's also a couple of years old. And it shows one part that needs the, all the steps that I've just shown from depowdering to infiltration. So the pre-processed STL files were sent to the printer. And now the printer starts by depositing the glue. In that case, uh, the recoding is coupled with the heating process because we have an adhesive that's uh, heat activated. So the adhesive is deposited with inkjet and then we have a roller going over in one step depositing the material followed uh, by um, a heat source that thermally activates the glue. You see that this is done really quickly because we don't have any um, fusing happening. It's a bonding process. Uh, we don't need to melt or do anything. Uh, the parts are taken out of the powder bed. We're depowdering them. We have a vacuum normally that takes the material out, the powder. And now this is built into a chamber with a runner system that 
we can infiltrate six parts at a time. It's heated inside of that mold. Everything is filled with sand, but we can look in the schematic or in this video and inside in the animation and see how the, the metal um, infiltration works through the runner system into the part. And now we let it cool and we have the finalized part.